Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned, DJI unveils Mavic 2 Enterprise. Leonardo successfully completes first flight campaign of Falco Evo. And FAA restricts drones operating near DOD and USCG mobile assets. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. DJI has unveiled the Mavic 2 Enterprise, a portable drone with features designed for businesses, governments, educators, and other professionals. The Mavic 2 Enterprise extends users' capabilities during critical operations like firefighting, emergency response, law enforcement, and infrastructure inspections. Mavic 2 Enterprise carries a high-resolution 12-megapixel camera that is stabilized by a 3-axis gimbal for smooth, stable video and images. The camera offers 2 times optical and 3 times digital zoom capability. Mavic 2 Enterprise allows new DJI accessories to be securely mounted to the drone's body and is operated through the Flight Control app. The Mavic 2 Enterprise accessories include M2E Spotlight, M2E Speaker, and M2E Beacon. The Mavic 2 Enterprise Universal Edition, which includes an aircraft, a remote controller, one battery, all three mountable accessories and a protector case with flight tools is $1,999. A fly more kit which includes two batteries, one battery charging hub, one car charger, one USB connector, one soft case and two propellers is also available to users for $419. In the next Unman Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. The Aero News Network, which produces Airborne Unmanned, as well as quite a few other programs, is looking for talented people to join us. We are looking for additional Airborne program staff with skills in front of and behind the camera to join our webcast team. Strong camera, video editing, and presentation skills are required. We're also looking for aviation writers and reporters, as well as an additional sales and marketing representative to reach out to the aviation community to help market Airborne and Aero News. If interested, please send your resume to jim at aero-news.net. The recently opened Point Charter Autonomous Systems Testing Area will provide Calgary businesses, industry, and researchers with a low-cost and accessible place to test drones, autonomous vehicles, or the next big innovation. Calgary is one of the first major cities in North America to offer airspace for the mass testing of commercial drones on municipal-owned land. Point Charter ASTA, located in the southeast, has approximately 125 acres of land, available to meet the increasing demand from companies and educational institutions wanting to test aerial drones. There is more to flying a drone than maneuvering it through backyard trees, especially when it's being used commercially. The Delta Regional Authority created a program, Workforce Development Training the Trainer, using unmanned aerial systems to deal with that issue. The University of Louisiana Monroe's Dr. Sean Chenoweth, Associate Professor of Geosciences, was just awarded a $90,000 grant from the DRA for training the trainer to teach people in Northeast Louisiana how to operate a UAS. Once they are trained UAS operators, they can go out and train others. RO is now licensed to test autonomous vehicles on public roadways in California. After acquiring RO in October 2017, RideCell began offering self-driving vehicle technologies. Initially, RO developed and operated driverless shuttles for private geofence locations, such as corporate parks and university campuses. 
but the company is now expanding its autonomous product, offering to include passenger vehicle models and minivans that will operate on public roads alongside existing vehicle traffic. That was our Unman Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Leonardo has successfully completed a series of test flights of his Falco Evo remotely piloted air system in Bulgaria. The flight campaign was to validate a package of upgrades that extends the endurance and operational range of the platform for overland and maritime missions. This includes a beyond line of sight satellite data link system and a new propulsion system based on a heavy fuel engine. Further trials are now planned that will see the Falco Evo flying equipped with Leonardo's new Gabbiano TS ultralight surveillance radar combined with a high definition infrared electro optical system, automatic identification system, and a comms relay suite. The Falco Evo, the longest endurance model from Leonardo's Falco RPA's family, is a surveillance and intelligence gathering platform suited to overland and maritime missions. It can fly for more than 20 hours while carrying a payload of up to 100 kilograms. The Falco Evo has already been delivered to its launch customer in the Middle East region, while the original Falco RPAs has been chosen by five customers. More than 50 Falco family RPAs are currently engaged on operations around the world. At the request of the DoD and the Coast Guard, the FAA is using its existing authority to address concerns about potentially malicious drone operations over certain high-priority maritime operations. The FAA, in cooperation with DOD and USCG, is restricting drone flights near U.S. Navy and USCG vessels operating in the vicinity of Naval Base Kitsap in Washington State and Naval Submarine Base Kings Bay in Georgia. Drone operators are required to maintain a distance of at least 3,000 feet laterally and 1,000 feet vertically from these vessels. These special security instructions provided in an FAA NOTAM are effective immediately. The full text of this NOTAM and additional information on these special security instructions, including a visual depiction and geospatial definition of the relevant airspace, is available on the FAA website. The FAA also warns drone operators that these USN and USCG vessels are authorized by law to take protective action against drone perceived to be safety or security threat. Further operators who do not comply with FAA special security instructions also may be subject to enforcement action. In a separate special notice advisory notum, also effective immediately, the FAA strongly advises drone operators to remain clear of DOD and Department of Energy facilities and mobile assets as well as USCG vessels. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week.